Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to go over system setup and network setup. Um, these, these are going to be accessible by clicking the settings button here. And for the most part, you're going to leave these settings at their defaults. But just briefly to go over some of the settings here, um, one of them, when disk is full, you can choose overwrite data or stop recording. You generally want to keep this set to overwrite data. This means that when the DVR software fills up a hard drive, it'll go back and record over old footage rather, rather than just stopping recording altogether and presenting a, an error message on the screen. Um, so like I said, basically, for the most part, you'd want to leave this set to overwrite data. Um, recording disk, this is important. You, you want to make sure that you choose a hard drive that's separate from the one that your operating system and DVR software are installed on. So on this system, drive C is where Windows XP and the DVR software are installed. So we've chosen a secondary hard drive, disk E. Uh, it can be a secondary partition. It doesn't have to necessarily be a second hard drive, but um, it needs to be set to record to a different partition or different hard drive from the one that your DVR software and operating system are installed on. Uh, the reason you have to do it that way is because if you fill up the hard drive with the operating system on it, uh, the DVR software won't be able to record over old footage because the operating system is there and it's not allowed to record over the operating system on the hard drive. So, uh, yeah, you again, you want to make sure that this is separate from wh what is typically the C drive. You want to make sure it's something other than that. Uh, the other thing here is going to be uh, date format. You can set up how the date is displayed on the screen and it gives you different options here it can be the the day of the week the day of the month the year you can you can you can set it up so it so it displays the year first the month different configurations there and for time format you can you can use regular time or military time down here in network setup uh, again you you can probably just use the defaults here uh, for remote connection, you want to make sure it's enabled. Um, for PDA connection, we'll be going over this in, in another tutorial. If you have a Java-enabled PDA, you can actually log into the DVR from a remote uh, location, well, remotely from your, your PDA. And you can go ahead and enable that. It's not going to hurt anything if you enable it and you don't use the feature right away. Remote connect port, this is something that's really important if you plan on connecting remotely. Uh, both of these actually, PDA connect port and remote connect port. Um, but by default, port 5100 is the port that is used for connecting to the DVR from a remote location. So if your DVR is connected to a router, you want to make sure that you have port 5100 forwarded to the private IP address of the DVR. If you're not sure of what your private IP address is, you can find find out what it is by going to start, run, typing in CMD, OK, then IP config. And your IP address is going to show up. This first number here is going to be your private IP address. So in your router, this is the address that you want to forward port 5100 to. And the type of forwarding is TCP. Uh, PDA Connect port, you can leave this at 5101. We'll explain how to take advantage of this in the tutorial on connecting via PDAs. In this section here under boot setup, you can you can basically choose what happens when you quit out of the DVR software, and you can also schedule the DVR software to force the computer to shut down and reboot at regular intervals. Um, by default, uh, 
exit to Windows is selected, that means that if you quit out of the DVR software, it's going to shut shut down the software, but you'll you'll be returned to the Windows desktop. Uh, you can choose exit and shut down. That means that if you quit out of the DVR software, it's going to quit out of the software and then shut the computer down. Auto reboot allows you to choose which days of the week the system is going to reboot. You can choose, you know, we usually recommend that you set it to reboot every couple days. So I'm going to choose Wednesday. And Friday. Actually, that's Saturday. Okay. I'll choose Saturday. And then you can choose the time that it's going to reboot. So we can set it up to reboot at 5 o'clock on Wednesdays and Saturdays. You can also choose auto shutdown and this will this will schedule the system to shut down at a regular interval. You typically don't want to choose this particular option because what'll end up happening is the system is going to shut down but then, you know, it won't be able to reboot. And that means that if you're if you're not if you're not in front of the DVR, once it shuts down, it's off until someone turns it back on manually. So in some situations, you, you may want to take advantage of that feature, but most customers won't have a use for that. Reboot is a lot more useful. And again, you choose the days of the week. These numbers represent Monday through Sunday. Monday is 1, Sunday is 7. And you can choose the time of the day that it reboots on these particular days that you've chosen. And that's it for this tutorial. Once you, once you have made those selections, you want to make sure that you click Save and Return because if you don't click this, none of these settings are going to take effect. So you want to make sure you click that. It'll ask you if you're sure. And you, you can click Yes, and then it'll take you back to the main screen. And that concludes this tutorial.